Finograph is my number four app and five bookkeeping acts that will actually change the way that you do business. And Finograph is where bookkeepers can become virtual CFOs in a click or two, really. You uh, log into Finograph, you link it up to your QuickBooks online company or your QuickBooks desktop. It'll sync with either. Of course, it's much more seamless when you're going cloud to cloud. So it's one of the other reasons why I strongly encourage people to go to QuickBooks online because the integrations are just much, much better. Anyway, uh, you can get high-level analytics about what's going on with your company using Finograph. You can, and Finograph will pull the data from your financials and start running these ratios. And these ratios start to become really important to look at, especially once you know the books are clean. So I can hover my mouse over the description here for the current ratio. And notice what Finograph does. It doesn't just give me the analytics. It actually teaches me what it means, right? So current ratio, the meaning if it's uh, it's 1.35, which means that there's a dollar 35 in current assets to pay every dollar in current liabilities. That's basically pretty good. It means we have enough in uh, assets to satisfy all our liabilities if we needed to. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at the actual ratio and we move our mouse over that, we click on it. 3.06 is very good. That means we can settle our liabilities three times over with the assets we have. Right, in the current and quick ratio, which is underneath that, they look at the liquid assets, the assets that presumably are either cash or could be converted to cash pretty quickly, such as accounts receivable. One of the differences between current and quick, quick ratio eliminates inventory because it says, what if inventory is not liquid? What if it can't be liquidated easily? So we want to take a look at that metric sometimes as a more conservative view of if we had to, what would it take to be able to satisfy our short-term liabilities with our short-term or current assets? So... We get to get the high-level analytics. We get to learn what they mean. Uh, it'll also tell you how you can improve uh, the assets. So over here, if I go flagged, it says flagged because it's below the industry average of 2.73. And when you set up your company in Finograph, you're going to put in what's called the NAICS code. It comes off your tax return, and it's what gives you the comparative data to compare you with the industry. Now, if I go back to quick ratio, uh, you know, the description or current ratio for that matter, that's where, and I'll leave my mouse there for a minute so you can see it, it also gives you potential solutions. It says move some short-term liabilities to long-term or sale or lease back some of the fixed assets. Now, of course, you can only move short-term liabilities to long-term if it's appropriate to do so, but oftentimes it is. A lot of times by default, uh, we're moving fast, bookkeepers aren't paying attention, and a lot of times we do have a lot of short-term liabilities or, or what really are long-term liabilities classified or short term, right? We have a, you know, a long term loan payable that's not going to get paid off within a year. We have a mortgage on a property that the company owns that's definitely not getting paid off in, within a year. So those really should be classified as long term. So a lot of times it's simple little things like that that are actually correcting the books, not manipulating them, that will actually improve the ratio or give you a clear picture of what that ratio looks like. So once you understand from reading about this how they can be improved, then it follows you can create a plan of action for improving this stuff. And you, you know, as, a, as an accounting professional, as an outsourced CFO myself, this is what I'll use once I've got the client's basic financials cleaned up and once I've got projections in place for them, I'll tack this on all the time and start looking at it with the client so that we can look at it together and understand it. These charts can all be individually sent or downloaded as images format or PDF. So I, if I just want to focus on working capital with the client, I can send just that piece. Or up at the top, I can download a PDF of the whole Finograph. The other thing is it keeps a history. Every time I want to run a new Finograph for a company, it keeps a history so I can compare what things look like today with what things look like the last time I created a Finograph. So Finograph is where it really kind of gives you that CFO perspective, you know, what the chief financial officer is concerned with looking at. So you can get, you know, lay out those yardsticks and lay out the roadmap for, you know, where you are now, where you want to be in the future, and how you're going to get there, right? So you can create a plan of action for improving these ratios and manage the business really from these numbers and understand what the impact is. If we start getting less liquid, if we can't satisfy our liabilities, we can check these early warning signs and do things about it before it's too late, before the problems become insurmountable. So Finograph, again, is where the bookkeepers can become the virtual CFOs or the virtual CFOs can do just that much better of a job because this gives us a tool that we can use to help you as the small business owner really get a gauge on what's going on with your business. So Finograph, my friends, number four, we got one more coming up. It's an app called HubDoc.